Hello everyone and welcome to Pavli Connect. So this video is going to be a complete guide on how to integrate basic auth based apps inside Pavli Connect. And to do so, we just require two basic things. First one is the API doc of the application which we want to integrate. And the second thing is a Pavli Connect account. So let's begin. So as you can see, here we are on the Pavli Connect front end dashboard. Now to access the developers platform of Pavli Connect, we just have to go to our URL section in the browser and after connect.pavli.com, we have to enter slash app. And now we can see that we have accessed the developers platform of Pavli Connect. Now here guys, by clicking on this create new app button, you can start creating and integrating your application inside Pavli Connect. So just give your application a name and click on save. So just for a reference guys, in this video, we are going to understand how we have integrated Razorpay inside Public Connect. So we are going to take Razorpay as an example as it also supports basic auth based authentication. So let's select this. So here I have a clone of my Razorpay integration which we have made. Now guys, after creating an app, after naming your application, the first thing which we have to do is to enter some basic details of the application, like the name of the application, the description that what does this application do. After that, we have to upload the logo of the application and the logo size should be 64 cross 64 inch pixel. Now the next thing which we have to select is the auth type. And here guys, in this video, we are working on basic auth. So here guys, you can see that we have multiple authentication methods over here. Just select basic auth from here. Then it is asking us username label and password label. So using basic auth, a user have to enter some username and password to connect their account in Public Connect. So as we all know, basic authentication is a HTTP based authentication approach and it use a base64 format to encode the username and password and send it to the application. So here guys, by means of username and password, as you all can guess, it's not actual username and password. It can be an API key or API secret or an API token or something like that. So you have to refer to the API doc of your application and to find what is the username and password is supposed to be. So guys, here uh, in Razorpay specifically, it requires the key ID and key secret, API key ID and API key secret of the Razorpay account. So that's why I have given the label to the username is key ID and the password as key secret. Then we have an option of help text. Now in this help text section, you can enter the complete instruction that how a user can get access to the key ID and the key secret. Likewise, we have entered here a complete help text that how a user can access the key ID and key secret of their Razorpay account. So you can give a basic idea or basic instructions to the user so that can get the username and password which are required for the connection. So after entering these kind of some basic details of the application, just click on save. And guys, the first step of integrating your application in Public Connect is completed. We have successfully added some basic details. Now let's move to the second step and start creating some triggers. So for that, we will go to the triggers section. And after that guys, just click on this create trigger button and give your trigger event a name and click on save. So right now we are going to have a look on an existing trigger of Razorpay which we have created. So here you can see a list of all the triggers which we have created, out of which there's a trigger of payment captured. Let's have a look on this. So guys, after creating, giving your trigger event the name, the first thing which we have to do is to add some details of this trigger event. Like what is the name? What is the description of this trigger event? What does this trigger event do? Then after that, here, here we have a field of video tutorial URL. So if you have a video on how this trigger event works on your application, you can add that tutorial over here as well. Then it is asking us trigger type. And this is quite important. So in the drop down below, we can see that Public Connect offers three different types of trigger. First one is webhook setup by instruction. Second one is webhook setup by API request. And the third one is polling to check new data. So if your application allows users to directly copy the webhook URL from Public Connect and paste it into your application, you can use webhook setup by instruction. You just have to enter the instruction that how a user can paste the webhook URL into their account of your application. Now the second thing is webhook setup by API request. So if you doesn't allow your users to directly paste the webhook URL and it requires an API call to add the webhook, then you can use this trigger method or trigger type. And if your application does not have webhooks, you can use polling to check new data. So in this case guys, at a regular interval, Public Connect will pull some data 
from your application into the workflow. So Razor Pay do allow webhook setup by instruction. So that's why we have selected it. Then it is asking us trigger response type. So as we all know, the, uh, by default, it is a simple response. By default, we get a simple response from the application. Then we have trigger setup instruction that the steps or the instruction, how a user can copy the webhook URL from Pavli Connect and add that webhook URL into the other application, for example, Razorpay. So by following these instructions, the user can enter webhook URL into their Razorpay account. Then if you have some kind of important help text, you can also enter it over here and then just click on save. And it is this easy to configure or create a webhook setup by instruction type of trigger. And here guys, we have created a trigger event in Razorpay. Now guys, after creating this trigger event, let's move to actions that how you can create and configure some kind of action events as well over here. So just go to this action section. And after that guys, let's see an action event of create customer. So by using this action event, we will be creating some new customer in Razorpay. Now guys, the first step is same. First, we have to enter some basic details of the action as well, like the name of the action event, the basic description of the action event. If you have video tutorial, you can add that too, and some kind of important help text. And just click on save. Now let's move to the API configuration of this action event. So guys, to perform this action, we have to make some kind of API call. So here, the first thing we have to select is the HTTP method. So here we can see all the five methods. So according to the API doc, we have selected HTTP method as post for this particular event. Then after that, if we have to actually enter the API endpoint URL, which is required to perform this action. So to create a customer, this is the API endpoint URL of Razorpay. So we have entered the endpoint URL and then we have to enter the request body type. So in the drop down below, we can see several body types, different body request body types. So you have to select in which body type you want to make the request. Then we have to select wrap an array. Do we want to wrap this data in array? No, we don't want to. And if your application requires to get some HTTP headers data for every new call, you can select it and enter that header data over here. If not, just unselect it and let it be. Then guys, to perform this action guys to create a customer in Razorpay by making a call on this endpoint URL, it requires some basic things like the name of the customer, email, contact, tail existing and notes. So here guys, some of the fields are mandatory, some of the fields are not. So we have to, while making this API call, we have to mention these details, this data over here. Now, one by one, we will see how we can create these fields and configure it. So by selecting set body and path parameters, we have created some kind of parameters over here. By clicking on this plus button in front of it, you can add multiple parameters according to your choice. So we will be creating these fields, these parameters to get some data from the user in the front end. So whatever parameter you will be creating over here, on that basis, a new field will be created in the front end. So the first parameter which we have created is of name. So in this parameter, we want to take the name of the customer from the user. So we have named this parameter name and the name of the parameter will be the same name which we have, which will be given in the API doc of the application. So for that, you have to refer to the API doc. So after naming a parameter, you have to actually configure it that what kind of parameter, what kind of field it is. And to configure, just click on this settings option in front of it. Now in this configure field section, the first thing which we have to enter is label name. That what will be the name of the label or the name of the field which we are going to show in the front end. So here enter the label name. And then we have to select is this field a dynamic drop down or static drop down. So we are not creating any kind of drop down. So we'll just ignore it. And then it is asking us for the field type. So in the drop down below, we can see three different field types for this right now. First one is string, second one is number, and third one is boolean. So this, this is a string, so we will select string. And is this field, is answering this field or entering some data in this field is mandatory or not? So it is a required field, so I have selected it. Then we have added some help text that what are the details that are supposed to be entered in this field. And after that, just click on save. So in this way, guys, we have created a field of name. We have followed the same process for creating fields like email, contact number, field existing and notes as well. So in this way, you can click on this new par add new parameter button, create these parameters, these fields. And by clicking on this settings option, you can configure them. Like what is the label or name of the field? What is the field type or is it required or not? 
some help text according to it and select other details as well. So in this way, you can create multiple parameters, multiple fields over here. After that, it comes the request body. So in this request body section, guys, we can basically send the raw JSON to the application which you are integrating. So we have created a raw JSON request body. We are in front of name. We are sending the response of name, the name field which we have received. In front of email, we are sending the response of email entered by the user and the same things for other events as well, other fields as well. So in this way, by selecting this, you can create a raw JSON body over here. And then just click on save. So in this way, guys, we have successfully created an action over here as well. Now, after all of this, guys, after creating these triggers and actions, let's check it in the front end. So we will go to the dashboard of Fably Connect over here. And after that, let's create a workflow and give this workflow a name. For example, demo. Let's check our trigger, which we have created that was payment captured. So let's search for our application, Razor Pay. So here the application on which we were working right now was named as Razor Pay Clone. So let's select Razor Pay Clone as the application. And then in trigger event from the dropdown, let's select the trigger event that was payment captured. And yes, guys, here you, you can see that after selecting this trigger event, Fably Connect gave us a webhook URL. And here we have the same help text, same description or same instruction that how this webhook URL is supposed to be entered in our Razor Pay account. So in this way, guys, we can see that we have successfully built this trigger, which is based on webhook addition or webhook setup by instruction. Now let's check the action as well. We will scroll down, come to our actions, and here we will search for Razor Pay clone private once again. And in action event, let's select this action event of create customer. Let's click on connect and select add new connection. So here guys, what we have to do, we have to enter the key ID and key secret of our Razor Pay account. So these were the same fields guys, which we have entered while creating this application. So while selecting our authentication type, we have given the username label and password label as key ID and key secret. So we can see same those fields over here. And also we have added some kind of help text that how a user can find the key ID and key secret in their Razor Pay account. So we can see the same help text over here. So let me enter the key ID and key secret of my Razor Pay account and make this connection. And yes, here we have entered the key ID and key secret of my Razor Pay account. Let's click on save and we can see that our Razor Pay account gets connected with Pavli Connect. And here you can see that all the fields, all the parameters which we have created while building the action like the name, email, contact, fail on existing customer and node. We can see all of those fields over here as well. So here in name, we will be entering the name of the customer to whom we want to add in Razor Pay. And we will follow the same details on same process for other fields as well. So in this way, guys, we saw that how you can integrate an application using basic authentication method inside Pavly Connect. So guys, if you are directly from the applications team, after integrating this application inside Pavly Connect, you can submit it for approval. And once this application gets approved by the Public Connect team, it will be available publicly on Public Connect platform for making or setting up automations and integrations. And if you are not from the applications team, but somehow you integrated an application inside Public Connect, you can basically share this application privately with the user by inviting them. Now to share the application, just click on the sharing section and start sharing your application with other users of your choice as well. So guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any kind of doubts or queries, you can write us in the comment box below. So thanks for watching this video guys. Have a great day.